It is a beautiful Saturday morning in Slateport City, and the town is rumbling about the upcoming Shockwave match. The London Shockwave have been making headlines in Slateport City as assistant coaches Plussel and Minun have made the town avid PPL followers. And after a shaky week one, fans are eager for a stronger win from the Shockwave, a bit disgruntled over the messiness that took place over the week one game. Rumors circle the town that Coach Addison has come to Hoenn to train her upcoming team for Week 2. Just north on Route 110, Addison, having sneakily made her way to Hoenn, finishes her final preparation with her team. She consults Team Captain Deoxys on their upcoming strategy, leaning into Deoxys as a strong offensive threat this week. Deoxys readies itself to carry the team to a win. Greninja, exhausted after week one, seeks a more relaxed role on the team. Serena practices landing power whips against Tinkaton, whereas Tinkaton tests its endurance, hoping for redemption from last week's critical hit. Mianxiao, newly off the bench, is preparing itself for battle, hoping to make a strong debut this week and not forget anything too important. Rotom fan, Rotom fan's just vibing keeping the rest of the team cool in a very hot day here in Hoenn. The Shockwave depart for Peltea shortly, hopeful for success. What is going on Shockwave fans? Welcome to week two of the PPL where we are going up against Kilwaboom, aka Danny, aka the head coach of the NJ Goldangos. Now, this game will be post commentated by me because my girlfriend was over and I was not able to record while she was over because she was trying to sleep and I sort of just wasn't able to do it at the time. So before you click away, stay put because I will make this video really freaking exciting. Hope you loved the little intro. And that was the cute little creative thing. Hopefully I could uh, maybe make happen if I ever have to do a post com again. We'll see, who knows, let me know. Um, but yes, so we are going up against Kiwaboom, AKA Danny. We started the season last week against Seabad who uh, played very well, uh, incredibly well actually, and we ended up getting a bit unlucky, um, but ultimately lucky in the end by uh, Chase making a uh, tactical error in the end game and giving us the win. I fully acknowledge that. Um, and we're looking to get a bit of a cleaner win this time around. That is our goal for this season. Or, or for this week of this season, and uh, we're gonna just try and do uh, just that. We have a really strong team who's been training uh, in the Hoenn region and hoping that we can now be back in Paldea, kicking some butt against Danny. Danny in his week one uh, had a bit of a rough start. He got to face the raging fury of Gouging Fire, uh, which I definitely do not envy. So. Um, we are going to hopefully continue his losing streak and hopefully continue our winning streak into the beginning of this season. So without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the game. So we are here for the battle against Kiwaboom. He brings a lot of scary threats, but definitely also a pretty relieving team preview to see. What's not coming that you don't see on your screen is Primarily Metagross, a Pokemon that I thought was really strong here with Bullet Punch uh, priority. Uh, we don't see Donphan, which is absolutely huge because it means that he has no removal on this team. We don't see Rotom Heat, which uh, is not that big of a surprise. I thought Rotom Heat was the least likely Pokemon to come. And we don't see Abomasnow, which is not necessarily a surprise, but is definitely a relief not to see because uh, my team doesn't switch into Blizzards amazingly. So we are... Looking forward uh, to this match, this, these six mons are definitely uh, Pokemon that we've built uh, to beat. And uh, as far as sets go, here we go. Ooh, different layout, different cool thing. Uh, gonna go through each of the different mons. Uh, first of all, uh, like I said in the draft analysis, per week we're gonna try and orient around Wincon Deoxys Speed or Wincon uh, Greninja. Greninja uh, got a little bit uh, bruised up and uh, uh, definitely exhausted last week being our win condition carrying the team on its back to a victory So we're using Deoxys speed this time as our primary way to win the game It is not only a breaker uh, with Psy boost and uh, other mixed moves like low kick to hit Roaring Moon and uh, Ice Beam to hit uh, Thunderous Therian 
Um, but we are also Life Orb and uh, hopefully gonna outspeed everything. There's two uh, means uh, for, uh, you know, Deoxys speed to win, and that is A, it needs to outspeed everything on the field, and it, everything on the field needs to take just a little bit of chip, whether that's your hazards or uh, other possibilities. Otherwise, uh, every move that Deoxys has on its moveset uh, should be effective at uh, doing at least 70 to 80 percent to uh, most things with the life orb so that's absolutely massive uh, as far as hazards go we have uh, the greninja uh, i could have done hazard stack quillfish and put greninja in another role but what i liked about greninja this matchup is it beat donphan which um, quillfish didn't so donphan didn't come quillfish probably is better against these six but um, for the matchup as a whole, Spike's Greninja made a lot of sense, especially since I can turn into a uh, ground type against Lead Thunder Asterion and uh, be immune to the electric move. Uh, but yeah, it's our dedicated lead. We're going to try and set up Spikes, um, and we're going to hopefully die after that <laughs> and uh, bring in our other threats. So uh, next we have Mian Shao debuting this season, uh, trying to be Assault Vest this week. Uh, with Regenerator and carrying, uh, you know, Stab, Knock Off, Poison Jab, and U-Turn. It was really tough because I wanted to fit Axel on there to hit things like Thunder Asterion as well as Don Fan, but um, had a bit of four move slot syndrome. Uh, but we want the Assault Vest so that we can switch into threats like Thunder Asterion. We're never too at KO'd by Thunder Asterion with the Assault Vest, or we're never, th we're never too at KO'd, yeah, so it is a three at KO. Uh, with Thunder Assyrian, um, and then we are also never to it KO'd by uh, Modest uh, Boom Burst from Terra Normal to Dunsparce, so that's quite massive as well. So um, yeah, that that's that's pretty big, um, and we are also putting some physical bulk in Me and Shao in order to hopefully live a Roaring Moon hit, uh, like a Dragon Claw or a Scale Shot. We have enough bulk to live a uh, plus one Dragon Claw or a plus one Scale Shot that only gets four hits. If it gets five hits, then it's a roll. Um, but it's a very bulky me and Shao is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Bimbo Doll is back. It's the Serena. Hopefully it's going to land its Power Whips this time, and we're going to use it as an early game breaker. The Terra Grass switch-ins don't really exist. Obviously there are three resistances on your screen, but two of them fear Triple Axel, and the other one doesn't want to be knocked off. Um, so regardless, it's pretty good. I was toying around with different options uh, in terms of item. I was thinking about Loaded Dice Bullet Seed. I was thinking about Miracle Seed. I was thinking about even running Choice Scarf, but Custap Berry makes a lot of sense to get a surprise KO off on certain things such as the Thunder Asterion or the uh, Roaring Moon. So both uh, have pretty strong, uh, you know, likelihood to come in and revenge uh, Serena, and if I'm in Custap range or if I'm able to click Endure, uh, then I should be pretty good. I also expect uh, potentially Scarf Roaring Moon or Scarf Annihilate, so if I can Endure Custap uh, one of those two and KO it, that's particularly great. Um, and then I was running the Cokes earlier, and Terragrass Power Whip actually is a higher uh, or a stronger move than a Victini's V Create. So I'm definitely really enjoying Terra Serena this season, and I'm you know definitely looking to use it more because it's just incredibly powerful. Um, Pickpocket uh, Tinkaton is here to wall Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon can only hit it with Earthquake, um, and since it can't hit it with Earthquake with the Air Balloon, it mandates that Roaring Moon has to hit me with a contact move in order to break my balloon, such as U-Turn or Knockoff. Once it hits me with U-Turn or Knockoff, it will take Roaring Moon's item. I anticipate Choice Scarf to come, so if it takes uh, Roaring Moon's Choice Scarf, it means the Deoxys speed out speeds it, and it frees it up as a win con. Um, I could also do this versus Scarf Annihilate if it uh, reveals to be Scarf early. And then we have a, ver a couple strange moves. Um, among them is a Steel Beam, uh, which exists ideally to um, not allow Donphan to get a spinoff. Um, so I could become the Choice Scarf, then I click Steel Beam twice, and uh, Donphan never gets a Rapid spinoff. Again, Donphan never came, so is what it is. Um, but we also have Play Rough uh, just to beat the, the uh, Roaring Moon as well. Um, and then we have Old Reliable, um, the... Uh, Rotom Fan, a Pokemon that I'm a huge fan of, and a Pokemon that I'm considering making a Terra option, we'll have to see, um, but the fact this has come before Ursaring has come is definitely a bit of a testament to, uh, you know, how I'm sort of thinking about using this team, but we'll see as the as the week progresses. Um, but Rotom Fan was here for a couple months that didn't show up actually, mainly Metagross, um, but uh, it, it works quite well still against Annihilate and Roaring Moon, getting the Rocky Helmet chip off uh, against both these Pokemon is massive, and um, I 
it was it was the last mod to enter the team. I was considering a, a bunch of other options. I had like a DD on this team. I had uh, a couple other Pokemon on this team as well. I believe I had like Swampert at one point. I had Dragonite at one point. Um, uh, most mods on my team uh, made it to some draft of uh, this this team one way or another. But um, Rotom Fan ended up being the one of choice because the Rocky Helmet Chip is so massive against um, Annihilate and uh, Metagross as well. And you might say, well, you know, it has Rotom Fan or Rotom Heat um, and uh, Thunder Asterion on his team. Um, Rotom Heat I didn't think was coming, so I was just taking a gamble there. And then as far as uh, Thunder Asterion goes, uh, we're feeling very witchy today because will o Hex is actually a 2 at KO. So if I can will o uh Thunderous, uh, and then I can Hex it, that's going to do about 50% factor in the burn chip. So it's actually a 2 at KO, believe it or not. Um, and I don't have very much special attack investment. So Rotom Fan, I'm just excited to bring him. It's here for a good time. It's <laughs> definitely a bit of a, a team cheerleader, but he's going to show up off the bench a couple times. And I'm just, I'm just a huge fan of the Pokemon. So we'll see how we do. All right, so let's get going with the match. He is going to lead out with the Dedun Sparse, and I'm leaning off the Greninja. Dedicated plan for the dedicated lead is to get up spikes, and no Don fan means no removal. So any spikes that go up here will be permanent. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, regardless of what this wants to do, it could set up rocks, it could glare, it could boom burst. Uh, spikes are so necessary uh, for the Deoxys speed win con this week. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix spikes, become the ground type. Uh, which I don't think is too relevant in this scenario. If uh, Glare didn't affect ground types, then perhaps it would be. But in this case, it isn't. We're just going to get up one layer of spikes as Boom Burst is going to come off. Now here is already uh, where I make the, my first misplay of this game, and that is by staying in, or rather not staying in. And uh, I actually look at this uh, damage, and it kind of spooks me a bit, and I kind of say to myself, you know what, let me let me go into me and Xiao right now and uh, try and soak up two Boom Bursts. And uh, since I'm AV, I, I'm able to do that, especially since this Boom Burst reveals to, you know, not be specs or anything. Um, but, you know, it basically means that I'm about to take a huge chunk of damage. Now I can't take, uh, you know, uh, two T-Bolts from Thunderous, for example. So uh, here I click Knock Off, expecting potential Terra Ghost to come off. If it is Terra Fairy, it's not the end of the world, because I can uh, go back into Greninja and click Gunk Shot against Terra Fairy to Dunsparce afterwards. Uh, and it ends up being Terra Fairy to Dunsparce. So uh, even though this Knock Off isn't going to do a ton, I can't necessarily die to any one hit. Um, Terra Blast is even doing less than Boom Burst. And I uh, get rid of the leftovers, which is quite huge. But Glare is massive, because it's gonna put me in a position where, frankly, I just like can't, you know, <laughs> outspeed things like Primarina, for example, or even uh, this is Dunspar since I have very little speed on this. Uh, another thing I notice uh, during this turn is that I actually am missing some EVs <laughs> on uh, on the Inshao, so that's gonna bite me in the butt a little bit. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, now, actually, U-turn is a slow U-turn, and I'm wondering uh, if he'll know this or not. The idea here would just be tank the next boom burst to get a slow U-turn off, and then I can go in to Greninja, um, but he actually thinks that uh, I'm gonna switch out or that the U-turn will go first and double glares me. Uh, so this works out perfectly for me. And uh, even though uh, it makes me paralyzed and have some HP gone, this is actually not the worst case scenario for me. I can go back into my dedicated lead that I was just supposed to sack turn two. And I can click Gunk Shot, uh, which has a roll to kill, um, but I freak out about the accuracy <laughs> and uh, misplay by going into Serena. Now this isn't the worst thing in the world because I've EV'd the Serena to live two Boom Bursts um, and Terra Grass Power Whip uh, just as much has a roll to KO. So um, I decide to go for the Power Whip roll since it's 5% uh, more accurate. Uh, not really thinking through the fact that if I don't get this roll or I miss the hit, uh, a glared Serena would be absolutely atrocious here. So um, I make a bit of a misplay. Uh, in this sequencing as well, uh, you know, Serena had infinitely more value than uh, Greninja at this point in the match. Um, and by, you know, making this risk, I put myself in a position where I'm taking damage on this thing or get this thing being paralyzed, whatever it is. So I go for the power whip um, and it's just barely going to miss out on the KO. There was a couple rolls where it could have done it, but nope. And now he's going to get to outspeed me with Glare, which means that he could roost this turn uh, and fish for a full para slash a miss. Um, or he just boom burst for damage, but I am EV to live two of these boom bursts, so I can try and nab the KO uh, if I want to. I guess I'm, I'm being very ballsy this turn, just assuming he's not going to click roost, um, which I guess is fair enough at this point in the game. Um, but I do live two of these boom bursts, uh, with the exception of the fact 
that he has a bit of investment on uh, the Citadon Spire, about 44 EVs, which is going to turn the 0% chance to a KO into something like an 11% chance to 2 a KO with Boom Burst. Um, so even if uh, I get fully paralyzed here, which is only a 25% chance, uh, I should still be coming away with this exchange with only 50% lost on my Serena, but I do get fully paralyzed and he gets a close to max roll uh, against the Serena, which uh, is not good at all because it means that it's only going to take a, uh, you know, another roll uh, that's really high to KO me here. So I believe at this point, since he's gotten the max roll of his first hit, uh, the next hit is only three rolls to KO and he gets that too. So he gets sort of back to back uh, max rolls plus the full para. And that means essentially that my answer to, uh, you know, the Primarina and my way to fight back against some of the speed controls, such as like Scarf Annihilate or Scarf Roaring Moon, uh, is gone. And uh, that's really bad. And what I should have done is I should have just gone into Greninja, should have clicked Gunshot. And even if Gunshot missed out on the roll, um, at the very least, I would have. Uh, you know, still at a Serena, and Serena was more valuable than Greninja. So we're self-reflective upon this, but um, nonetheless, you know, <laughs> what happened happened, and I got to find a way back in after all the misplays that I made. For, it's something about the Dunsparce, like it, it's not good, and uh, I just keep choking around it. But uh, you know, I, I, at the same time, like the luck still kind of sucks between the 25% pair chance and the 11% chance for that boom burst to a Kaomi. Uh, as always, it means that Bimbo Doll is disappointing mother. So. Here we go, it's fine, it's whatever. I mean, Serena's been good so far this season. It's just like, if it wasn't, like, if it didn't like miss or get fully paralyzed, it would be okay. Um, but I don't have a switch into this muck. I mean, arguably I could go into Rotom here, but I think Rotom's still too valuable. Um, and I don't want it to get like paralyzed from like a poison touch, poison jab here. So I think a, a second layer of spikes is, is the most beneficial to me because it's gonna guarantee to put uh, things like uh, it's Primarina in range of, uh, you know, Psycho Boost after some periods of time, or uh, if the Rung Moon is defense investment, it means it's going to die to a low kick. Uh, it just seems to have more effect. So what I could do here, arguably, is I could go into the Noodler and click Psycho Boost, but there's two stops to this. A is that uh, it could be Pyapa Berry, which means that he would just KO me back with knockoff, um, and that would be really bad. Uh, B is that it could be Assault Vest, and Assault Vest has a couple rolls to live, even a modest Psycho Boost from uh, Deoxys if it's max HP, max Spadaf. So um, while I could go into the Noodler and just try and claim a KO right now, um, I think it's safer to go into the Rotom. So <laughs> we're gonna do that, we're gonna go into Old Reliable and uh, click Willow. And uh, I'm pretty confident that Thunder Hysterian's gonna come out. Uh, perhaps the best move uh, was to double, um, but I don't really know what I would have doubled into necessarily. I guess it would have had to be into me and Xiao, uh, but even then, like, <sighs> I'm fully paralyzed. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a bit terrifying. So, the idea of clicking Willow and then maybe trying to click Hex afterwards or get a Pain Split off after this thing damages me uh, seems to, in my mind at this moment, get me more mileage. And uh, so, the, uh, Willow's Willow's safe. Plus, if he decides to stay in for some reason, it means I get to burn the mock. So. I consider going into me and Shao here, but unfortunately, because that little bit of chip I took and the sort of miss, missed EVs that I could have put into Spidef that I just like didn't have on this me and Shao at all, um, I actually don't live two T bolts uh, from this range from like you know a modest uh, thunderous. So I am now in a position where I can either pain split or hex. I fear a nasty plot, so I hex rather than pain split. Probably should have pain splitted, um, but nasty plot was was quite scary. Um, so at this point, I don't think uh, I can let Rotom go down because Rotom is pretty necessary for this muck and can paint split back up. Uh, Mian Xiao is is not just miss EV'd, um, but is also in range of two T bolts now. So and paralyzed. So honestly, it, it seemed to have less value. Um, but the, this chip is still nice because it puts it in range of Ice Beam. It even puts it in range of Knockoff, which means that I uh, don't necessarily care about uh, the spit up drops. Uh, from Psycho Boost when it comes to uh, KOing this Lundy. So uh, that being said, I think I still think Pain Split was the right play. I could have Pain Splitted uh, to have higher health on Rotom and then gone into Mia Chao afterwards. And if it was Nasty Plot, uh, then I just would have cried. But <laughs> at a certain point, you just have to, uh, you know, hope it's not. Uh, so yeah, we are going to click Knockoff here. It does guarantee you get the KO. I take a little bit of time just to make sure. It definitely does because uh, Deoxys is powerful and broken. I'm like literally like max attack, max special attack on this thing uh, with Life Orb. So uh, any move that I click is going to be doing a, a huge chunk of damage. 
Um, now, the, the big reason uh, as well uh, that uh, not pain splitting here is going to hurt me is because uh, Primarine is going to come in here, and uh, if it has some bulk on it, uh, it's not going to die to just one Psycho Boost, and I don't have a switch in anymore uh, since Rotom is quite low, and since I didn't, uh, you know, since Serena essentially did not win the exchange uh, with Zidane Sparse because of all those uh, unfortunate percentages. Uh, I'm not gonna have a switch in for this, and you can tell I'm gonna I'm gonna go into my Pokemon and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna say, look, if uh, Tinkerton gets its balloon popped, I can't win with Deoxys because I need to pick pickpocket the Scarf and Eyelape and the uh, the uh, Roaring Moon, and I can't lose uh, Rotom because it's just gonna put me back in the same situation. So I have to go for the crit here. I, I have no choice. I have to go for the crit, and uh, look at that. That's that's the Queen of Draft League difference right there. <laughs> that's what you get when. Uh, when you you call it. I mean, at this point in the game, I looked at the, the game state and I said, the only way I have any chance of winning here is if I click Psycho Boost in this current moment and get a crit. And uh, that's exactly what I did. Um, and sometimes it's not just about getting lucky, but it's about knowing when you need to get lucky. If I was going for, you know, if, if I was in this point and I was on the back foot and I wanted to go for a 2-0, I would not have made that play where I just clicked Psycho Boost, but I wanted to win. I wasn't going for the lower differential. I, I wanted to win. If that went if that went wrong, then, you know, this was going to be a, a differential loss, but, uh, you know, that was, that gave me the best chance of winning this game, so I, I had to go for it, and uh, it's about recognizing that shit. Uh, so this is Booster Energy. That's huge, uh, and it means that uh, once I can force this thing out and make it switch, uh, I will... Uh, be able to outspeed it and kill it with low kick after the spikes chip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to my uh, Tinkaton uh, and pray that he's either clicked Earthquake or Dragon Dance uh, and has not broken my balloon. And uh, thankfully, he does just that. Um, I think it was a misplay for him to do that. I think it makes sense for him to click Knock Off uh, this turn, uh, but he doesn't, and that's really nice <laughs> because I'm just going to click uh, Play Rough. And unless he has Fire Fang for some reason. Uh, it's not going to do much. And even if he does have Fire Fang, uh, I'm going to live it. And since Booster Energy is consumed, I, I won't pickpocket anything. So, so long as I can uh, <sighs> somehow pickpocket the Annihilate, because I'm, I'm terrified that this is a Scarf Annihilate. Um, so that's the reason I can't stay in here, is because I want to keep my uh, Air Balloon safe for the Annihilate. The only way I lose this is the uh, Scarf Annihilate and back in the way he's playing it. it it kind of seems like it's Scarf Annihilate, I, especially since the Roaring Moon wasn't Scarf. So um, I'm convinced at this point I need to keep Tinkaton alive so I can take a hit from Scarf Annihilate, uh, pickpocket the Scarf, and then it's going to mean that from this game state, uh, Deoxys Speed will be able to uh, win the game, especially if I can get some chip on this Muck, because it will mean that I only need to click a Psycho Boost against the Annihilate, barring I uh, land the 90% accurate move. And uh, everything else, I can click the low kick, and hopefully if I chip this muck enough with the, the combination of Rocky Helmet and like Pain Split and stuff, then uh, that's also going to put it in range of knockoff. I'm pretty sure it's in range of uh, knockoff after Spikes uh, switching out from this point anyway, so that's why the switching into Rotom gain the Helmet chip is also so crucial. So Pain Split's going to just solidify that even more, plus cover a switch into Roaring Moon or Annihilate. Um, as he knocks off here and gets the poison, makes sense. He's hit me uh, twice now, so it, it makes sense. And here I make a horrific play, because if this Scarf, on, if this Annihilate is Scarf, um, I need to keep Tinkaton's item alive. And to be honest, I was just rushing, <laughs> and I did not calc this damage, and I just assumed that Volt Switch would KO this thing, and didn't. And it now means that I am forced to either uh, switch into the Deoxys and die, which it would be bad, <laughs> um, or uh, go into the Tinkaton, and the issue with that is it's going to be that I pickpocket the Assault Vest, and that's awful, because it means that if it's Scarf Annihilate, uh, I'll no longer be able to take the Scarf. It's going to outspeed my Deoxys, uh, because I don't have any speed investment in Deoxys. Um, I'll pickpocket the AV, I guess that's something, uh, but yeah, now I have no means to <laughs> really deal with this Annihilate. So, um, there's two ways to win here, uh, from this point, uh, through all the misplays and through all the RNG. Uh, and that is A, uh, to hope <laughs> that Annihilate is not Trace Scarf, uh, or B, uh, to essentially attempt to uh, win uh, the 1v1 with Tinkaton versus Annihilate. Uh, if I could just, for some reason, uh, you know, take two uh, hits, like a Drain Punch into a Rage Fist, 
um, or that he potentially doesn't bulk up or something like that. Um, and for some reason, I'm able to make it so that player off uh, is a 2 KO. I'm not sure. If he has a lot of bulk, then it isn't. Um, and I imagine if he was a bulk upset where he could change up moves, he would have a lot of bulk. Uh, so I'm not sure. I'm not really calculating at this point. At this point, I know what the, the moves I have to make are. There's not really any, any pivots I can make that uh, changes those facts. Um, and he goes for Drain Punch here, and, and that sucks because it's a crit, and it makes me think, okay, well, now there's no way I live a Rage Fist, just, I just assume, right? Um, but player up is a 2 KO, which means that there's no defense investment in this thing, or at least it's not as much as I had thought, uh, especially since I barely have any attack on this Tinkaton. So uh, if I do live this, player off will KO, and Deoxys will KO the uh, Roaring Moon, so that's pretty big. I just go for that, and he switches up moves. He's not choiced, uh, and I live. Let's fucking go, Lee Lu. So, um, I would definitely say uh, Tinkaton doing a ton of work here, redeeming itself from last week after getting crit. Uh, it's still got crit. It's clearly, <laughs> it loves being crit for some reason, uh, but uh, it actually persevered in spite of the crit and actually KO'd the mod that I was scared of the whole time. I was scared that I had to, uh, you know, let Tinkaton uh, trade blows with it uh, for uh, Deoxys Speed to win uh, against it in the end game, uh, but it turns out Tinkaton just beat it 1v1 without Deoxys having to click Psycho Boost against it, uh, which actually saves me clicking in an accurate move. So, well done, Tinkaton. Uh, Deoxys is just gonna come in, it's gonna click Low Kick, uh, it's gonna get to uh, hit Roaring Moon with that really strong physical attack, and uh, that's great. Uh, like, the original, like, version of this build was uh, actually... <laughs> Uh, ice Beam, just Ice Beam. I, do, I still had Ice Beam on this build, but it was Ice Beam just for the Roaring Moon, and I clicked Ice Beam and it did like 55%. I was like, wow, I had no idea Roaring Moon's spadaf was so ridiculous, but that thing just dies to a low kick. So <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is. Anyway, yeah, 2-0 win. We, uh, we take that 2-0 win against Killaboom. I'm still happy with how I played. I'm still happy with how I built. It's just uh, both games have been sort of shrouded in RNG on, on both sides. Um, so... It's just really a question of trying to get a clean game without RNG, <laughs> win or lose, that's the goal. So I um, hate to disappoint all the Slateport City fans that uh, was hoping for a cleaner week two because it looks like we're just getting some messy games this season. Hopefully it's making for some entertaining content. But when I do post comms, I uh, tend to really enjoy doing uh, an MVP. Uh, and that MVP is very obviously Deoxys. It's Deoxys, y'all. It got uh, three KOs here, which is going to put it tied for Greninja at uh, MVP. So next week is going to be a big tiebreaker because um, Greninja went one and one uh, this week. Deoxys went one and one last week. Um, and then both got three kills in their respective, uh, you know, uh, games. So um, whoever gets the most kills next week is going to be uh, ahead in the MVP race. But Right now, our top two picks are doing quite well, and uh, Tinkaton especially. Um, huge shout out to Tinkaton uh, as a runner-up for the MVP. Um, basically, like, made it so Annihilate wouldn't have even been an issue if it was Scarf. Um, definitely, uh, with the Air Balloon, uh, put me in an endgame position to win. That was massive. Um, as far as other ones go, like, <laughs> me and Xiao, uh, whoops on the EV thing. Uh, totally made a mistake there. And then uh, Serena, uh, getting fully paralyzed not great um Rodan fan had a good time <laughs> um but probably should not have clicked bolt switch so a bit messy play for me this week um i was of course you know it, i was not playing great i was not um talking while i was playing which i'm typically quite used to doing um because my girlfriend was trying to sleep so um a couple factors that kind of just made this a messy game but uh, ultimately it is what it is and uh yeah next week we play ellie super excited for that one um, and I'll see you all then. Hope you all yeah, enjoyed the postcom. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone.